What's up teachers? This video is all about getting your students in your class ready on Khan Academy. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create your account. So that way, regardless of whether a student already has a, an account from a parent creating it or you're creating the account, you're going to be able to add any of those students to your class. So you're going to press the teacher button and you're going to create an account based on one of these three things here. I already have an account through Google, so I'm going to press continue with Google. Here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a class once you get signed in and you're ready to go. So I'm going to press add a class pretty straightforward. You could have multiple classes depending on what you're doing. I'm just going to have one. You could also utilize Google Classroom if your class or district uses that. So when I press next, I'm going to press X here. So now here is my first class. You can see that I have zero students. So my class is set up. Now I just need to find some students. Okay, so now that we have a class, we're going to have to add some students, right? So there's a couple different avenues about adding students, uh, creating brand new student accounts, and then also adding in students that already have an account from what a parent made for them. And you don't want to lose all that content, so there's a way to add them into your class as well. So I'm going to press where it says zero students right here. And it's going to pull up a little section where I can add new students. So I'm going to press the add new button, and there's a couple different ways to do it. If you have Google Classroom, this is probably the easiest method of doing it. You can invite them through Google Classroom, they'll accept it, and you're good to go. If they don't have that, you can invite them to join your class with a link. This is if students already have an account on Khan Academy created by themselves or through a parent. So you can press that and it will give you this class code. It's also up in your top corner over here. You can send that out as a QR code or just as a link through whatever you're using, Seesaw, email, whatever. So that way the parent can allow their student to join using that code with your class. And that way you can add assignments for them and you can track all of their progress. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be typing in a thousand different student usernames and only ones that they're going to be forgetting two seconds later. So what I usually would do is I would press uh, share class code at the very top and I would uh, click on print instructions. I would click English and then it's going to give me this little printout here to where I can just write the class code on these four sections, make copies, send that out, send it out via Seesaw, email, and then even if a student doesn't have an account, the parent can create that account for them, enter your class code, and bam, now they're signed up through your class. They are going to remember their username and password because they created it, not you. So it makes things a lot easier for everybody. Okay, so right now I'm on a student's account. Let's imagine that you sent that little flyer home with the instructions to create an account. The parent has done that for their child and now their child is signed in. How do they get into your class? So what they're going to do is they're going to press on teachers over on the side. And you can see that I am already added in here, but let's say that I'm not. What I would do then is I would take that code that was sent in on that form. I would paste that in right here and then I would press join the class and it will right away allow me to join that class and now I am linked when I go back to teachers there is my teacher and I'm all set okay you can now see that my class size has doubled right I have two students when I go over here now I can see that drummer has joined my class so this works and it's really simple for parents and for kids to have that code and just type it in rather than you're creating all the accounts for them. That takes a lot of prep work. So now that the students are in, I can assign work for them. I can also track any of the progress that they're doing independently at home or at school. It can show you everything. Now, one thing that I want to show you guys first is in order for you to add assignments, you first need to place them in a specific grade content. So when I go to placement right here, I'm going to press add a course and I will have to decide what grade and what content area I want them to use when I'm assigning coursework and you can always go back and change this later 
Let's imagine I'm second grade math. That's my main focus. I'm going to press save. And now I can create a goal for all my students to have second grade mastered by a certain date. Let's pretend. When I create this goal, when I go to assignments and press assign, now second grade automatically comes up. But if I didn't want to do second grade, let's say I only wanted for a certain student, I wanted them to do a fourth grade skill. I could edit the courses, I could add fourth grade, I could press save. And now for one particular student, I want them, I can tell that they're blowing things out of the water with addition and subtraction. So I want to start introducing them to multiplication. So I don't see it. Let's, uh, I'm changing my mind. So, okay, comparing with multiplication is actually what I was looking for. So I'm going to click this box here and it's going to assign those six lessons in this subtopic right here. So here's the six things that I'm going to be assigning this student. Now let me show you how to do that. When I press assign, I can decide that you can show you uh, different questions or you can do the same as the students, so that's really cool. And then also, I can decide which class I'm assigning it to and which student. So if I only wanted to go to that new student that just got added because they are the one that is excelling, I can do that. I can also change the date that it's due and the time that it's due. And when I press assign, those assignments will automatically be added to that student's catalog. Okay, I'm signed back in as a student, and what the student screen looked like before and what it looks like now is a lot different because of the things that the teacher has added in for them. Remember, we created a goal for them to master all the second grade content by September 17th. So now that goal is there, and they could go in and it will take them directly to second grade, and they can continue working on whatever they're working on. Or they can now go into the assignments tab, which wasn't there before because they had none. Now they can go into assignments and see everything that was posted for them. When they press start, it will automatically pull up whatever it was that they were doing. This one happens to be a video. In order for them to complete it, they have to finish the entire video. They can't skip or fast forward. They could go to the next assignment if they get bored. It will take them right back to where they were before if they need to come back to finish that assignment before the due date. So really cool stuff. Alright, I'm back in the teacher dashboard because there's a few other things that I wanted to show you. So the assignments are posted and let's pretend that those students are working on them. But there's a few other things that I want to see and they've really minimized the teacher dashboard to make things a lot more reasonable with what you're tracking and what you're looking at. So if I go to course mastery and I go to placement, this is where I place the goal of second grade. I could create a new goal, I could delete that one if I wanted to, I could edit it. So if you see that your students midway through second grade, the majority of them are ready for third grade content. You could change the goal mid-year, it doesn't matter. If you go to progress, this is really cool. It shows you a median of kind of where students are at overall with the percentage of their growth overall in second grade and also in every single unit. So remember, I have two students. The one student I was just in has done some of the content, one student has done none. So the average is about 18% of what they've completed. And then if I go into the units, one of the students have completed all of this. Now, if you wanted to go into a more detailed look of exactly what they're doing, exactly what standard it links to, you could click Take Me to the Old Progress print page, and that has a breakdown of everything. So, and it also shows struggling learners and all sorts of things that are really valuable to a teacher that wants to differentiate further in small groups. So this is great. I'm going to go back to the new page here. When I go back to assign, this is where we assigned stuff before. The scores will come in as you're looking at things. It also tells you if it was a video or not. So keep tabs on that because you don't want to assign all videos. If I were to go back and redo this, I would have deleted at least two of these so that way a student doesn't have to watch four videos in a row because that is sometimes a little bit too much depending on how long the videos are. You can also go to manage in your activity. So if I did want to delete one of the videos, it says if it's a video or an exercise right here. I could go to actions and edit it. Oops, I'm sorry. I just want to check the box. And then I'm going to press delete at the top and it will get rid of that one activity for the student. So that's a way of deleting or managing those tasks. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or trying to figure out how to get your class set up or where to begin with setting up those assignments, I'm always here. Drop a comment in that section below and I'll make sure that I get back to you. We'll see you guys soon.